Hello Spartan fans, welcome once again to Center Court Upstate Basketball Insider. We are joined as always by head men's basketball coach Eddie Payne. And coach, we'll go ahead and get your congratulations out of the way. From all of us here at USC Upstate, congrats on your 450th career victory. It speaks to both longevity and success and you have really touched the basketball world at all levels. Well, thank you. I mean, you know, I didn't even know it till after the game. Uh, Ty texted me about it, and uh, so that was nice. I, what was really nice is when your players texted you about it because uh, I didn't know. Well. I didn't know. So uh, you know, that's we'll just hopefully. We want to get 451. That's what we want next. Well, when the guys are aware of it, it speaks to what you mean to them. Let's get to the details of basketball now. A couple of big games we look back at. A tight one against Florida Gulf Coast and then a win that gets you back in the W column in conference play against Stetson over the weekend. Well, yeah, I mean, the Gulf Coast game, after the first 10 minutes, I think we played, you know, we probably played better than they did, but we dug ourselves a hole. Um, they hurt. Statistically, there was a lot of things that were even, but I thought the biggest difference was their length and their second chance points was, was the difference in the game. And uh, even though we actually had one more offensive rebound than them, but you know they got a longer front line that when they got the ball, they were able to finish around the rim. We weren't quite as successful doing that. And then, as is the case when you have a one possession type of game like that, eight to 10, plays that you look at on tape could easily be reversed if something fairly minor had happened and um, but that didn't happen so it was a very uh, disappointing and tough loss. Let's take a look back at that Florida Gulf Coast contest as well as the game against Stetson. Here are highlights and recaps from the two games this past week. On a memorable Thursday evening for all who were inside the Hodge Center on the campus of USC Upstate, the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles come away with a 71-68 win over the Spartans Upstate for the third consecutive game. Has a look at the end to try to either tie or win the basketball game, and they come up short for a third straight conference loss, Bill. Boy, a tough one. I mean, just uh, tooth and nail grinded out type of basketball game. Upstate finally kind of got over the hump, got the lead, but Give the Eagles credit down the stretch, making the shots they needed to, some cr crucial second chance points for the Eagles, and uh, they handed the upstate their third consecutive loss, as you said. This game was everything we expected it to be, and as we take a look back at some of the highlights from this contest, you'll see a lot of Ty Green. He's our Spartan of the game. Before we get to his specific numbers, though, these are the key moments for upstate from tonight's very intense battle. You see Green feeding it off to Schulte there for the bucket. Then probably the play of the game or one of the plays of the game for Upstate. Stevens with the touch pass and then Green with the finish. Green pulling up. Tough jump shot doesn't go. But again, loose balls, Jason. We saw a lot of second chance, kind of loose ball, just junk baskets as Green penetrates and pulls up. A great night for him, but Upstate falls just short. Green ends up with 26 points overall. And as we take a look at his numbers, came very close because of his efforts defensively, offensively, very close to his career high offensively, and certainly with his all-around performance, one of the better outings of his career. He seems to always have them against Florida Gulf Coast. He does, and that's a, definitely a team that you want him against. You see the 26 points really uh, sticks out as the number there. Took 24 shots to get it. I think only made one three tonight, but a great offensive output for the senior from Knoxville, Tennessee. Upstate tied the game three times. They end up falling by just that many points. And let's take a look at the overall stats. Here's our game summary. Anything you want to point out from here, Phil? Well, not really one stat, just the closeness of them all. You take a look at it and just right down the line, almost everything right there really close. But we mentioned it so much tonight, the second chance points. Florida Gulf Coast with 19 to Upstate's 11. And you see the three-point margin there. Boy, a couple of those swing the other way. Upstate make it out of here with the win. The Upstate Spartans pick up a second conference win this season and their 14th victory overall in a 91-67 win over the Stetson Hatters. Look back at this game, Phil. Nine lead changes in the first half. Stetson was in control early, but Upstate went on a late first half run and then really turned the intensity up in the second half to seal away the win. Boy, you take a look at the stat sheet at the end of this one. Spartans with the win in almost every single statistical category, whether it be rebounding, offensive rebounding. Spartans had great balance up and down the stat sheet as far as scoring was concerned. Uh, took a little bit uh, to get going for Upstate there in the start of the first half, but boy, they ran smooth. It was a well-oiled machine for about 30 of the 40 minutes for the Spartans. 
Let's take a look back at the highlights from this basketball game, and you will see the defense really did turn up for Upstate in that second half. The defense turned into offensive opportunities, and when it counted, the Spartans were able to put four different players in double figures yeah, today. Yeah, and 91 points on the board in total. Upstate started with the defense, and really was that play right there by Michael Buchanan on the defensive end. Uh, talked about the balance inside and outside scoring the basketball. Spartans knocked down 11 threes in this contest. Well, check that, 15 threes, and also getting 28 points in the paint. That's pretty good balance. We saw Thomas with his two big three-point baskets from the first half there, and of course Ty Green in timely moments able to knock down several. When you talk about individual performances in this game, really three different players you can talk about here. A double-double for Michael Buchanan, who made his presence known in this game. Shunquez Stevens ends up in double figures, and Ty Green matches his career high. It is a career high for Stevens. It is a tie of the career high for Green, and there are Spartans of the game. Able to knock down six of his seven jumpers from the up, from beyond the arc did Green, but you got to know he wanted to get that last foul shot to go down to get 30 and get his career high. But Stevens with his career high, eclipsing what he did at Georgia Tech, 15 for him. So, again, good balance. and. Uh, great to see Upstate with kind of an offensive explosion. Their defense gets so much attention for how good they are on that side of the ball, but able to put a lot of points up this afternoon. You look at the numbers for the team as a whole as we take a look back at our game summary. Upstate shoots better than 50% from the field in this game. You look, you look at that line for Upstate, Jason, nothing you don't like. Maybe the 14 turnovers like to get that down a little bit if you're going to be greedy about things, but better than 50%, almost 90% from the foul line, 15 threes, you out-rebound them. Boy, it's tough to not like uh, Upstate's performance today. Spartans even the all-time series with Stetson at seven games apiece, and here's the impact that it has on the Atlantic Sun Conference standings. Stetson still looking for their first win of the year, but a little traction for the Spartans as they get ready to head on a difficult road trip. Absolutely, that's a great verb to describe it, or a great term to describe it. Spartans now have their, now have their feet under them a little bit in a difficult stretch as they'll go on the road to Jacksonville to play the Ospreys and the Dolphins. Stetson, as you see, at the bottom 0-5. So, Coach, you mentioned it in the open, and not to belabor the point, but you were in three ball games in the conference season that all came down to the final possession, and then your team bounces back against Stetson and puts one away fairly early, a much-needed type win for your ball team. Yeah, we uh, obviously a lot of emphasis on that game because we definitely felt an urgency about winning the game and, um, and actually played probably our best game consistent throughout the game that we've played all year. Um, I thought I was particularly impressed with the pace that we played on offense and how we passed the ball on offense. Uh, Fred Miller did a terrific job, as did Mario, getting the ball up quick, pitching it ahead, uh, making people react quickly to passes, 20, 30-foot passes, and that really opened up things on when you reverse the ball. We shot the ball well. We had some guys... You know, Ty shot it particularly well. Fred, you know, made some shots. I mean, it, Quez made some shots. Uh, but because of the way the ball moved, uh, our team shared it particularly well, and we, they were able to attack closeouts, um, which means closeout meaning how somebody approaches the guy with the ball, how they close out on that individual. Get back into the lane. We had numerous possessions where two or three times we got in there, kicked it out, got back in there, kicked it out, or went into Big Mike and he kicked it out. So that was the best passing uh, game uh, of the year for us. You mentioned Michael Buchanan. Your big man comes away with a double-double, and a lot of folks that watched the game on Saturday had the sense that was a window into what he can be when he's at his best. Well, he definitely played harder and uh, did some things we've been trying to get him to do. and. Uh, and play with an emotion that he needs to play with all the time. And so uh, hopefully he can develop some more consistency uh, because we certainly need that. Uh, you know, he gave us a post presence when the ball's getting, even if they're not scoring, when the ball's getting in there, it helps you offensively dramatically, gives your perimeter guys more space to operate. Ty Green leads the way with 29, and it seems like we have this same conversation every week, but he has timely baskets for you and really is your field general on the floor throughout the contest. Yeah, I think the thing that's so gratifying about coaching a guy like Ty is you, all right, you pretty much understand what's going to happen 
in the game as far as he's concerned, and it's like every game. And when he's making shots like he did on Saturday, it just, it just elevates. And then when he makes a few shots, it opens up things for other people. And so, you know, his I can't remember how many assists, but he had a really good assist turnover ratio in that game. So he's not only shooting it, he's sharing it. So he had a terrific game, as did all our perimeter players. The senior leadership so important for the men's team. The same can be said for what happens on the women's side. Several leaders stepping up. A junior particularly that has made a difference is Brittany Clincy, and she will be our feature player in our Get to Know Your Spartan segment for this edition of Center Court. The one thing people will be surprised to know about me is that I used to be a gymnast and compete. I took it very seriously and I actually wanted to go to the Olympics. Uh, my favorite color is yellow because clearly my personality shines bright. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to choose a historical figure to eat dinner with, it would probably be Martin Luther King Jr. because I would truly want to find out if his dream of racial equality has came true in his eyes. Since my father played football for the University of Alabama, some probably think that I'm all roll tied. Well, growing up I used to be, but now I can't, can't be at all because I'm all Spartans, Spartan nation all day. My dream job would be to be an athletic director, uh, I'm drawn to that because I like the business side of that as well as the athletic side. So I want to combine that, put that together. So I think that would be the perfect job for me. My major is accounting and uh, I think that field will help being an athletic director because I know athletic directors manage the money. So hopefully I'll be able to manage the money once I become an athletic director. <laughs> my dream vacation would be going to Bora Bora on my honeymoon. <laughs> People know you and they get to know you on a personal level and they know your abilities. And this is really a place where I have seen, and I mean this, this is a place where I've seen students come here and, and really try to figure out who it is that they are. Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And I think every college kid go through that. But being here at Upstate and being a part of so many different programs, I know what my purpose is. And I can say that with confidence. You don't get lost in the crowd at Upstate. USC Upstate is a place where people can discover themselves. And now we reach the portion of the show where we look a little deeper at the women's basketball program fresh off a difficult road trip through the Sunshine State. And Coach, always in this conference, road games going to take everything you have. But you were playing the top tier teams in the Atlantic Sun thus far when you went on the road to Florida Gulf Coast and Stetson. Yeah, just, you know, two very, very uh, talented teams. Uh, obviously, they've uh, been the teams that we've been chasing for the last couple of years in our conference. Uh, both of them are different, but they're, they're, they're both very good basketball teams. They can put the ball in the basket and uh, very well balanced. Let's break them down one at a time, and we're going to talk about Raven Jefferson in both of these games. She puts 20 up and leads the way for you at Florida Gulf Coast. So break down that game for us. Yeah, she was definitely a bright spot for us. Uh, we were struggling scoring again. Obviously, we had some droughts, um, but she was a bright spot. She had 20 against Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, I think probably her career high. Uh, a good, solid game for her. It's good to see her coming around. I'm very well pleased with her progress uh, in her two years here. She's really uh, showing signs that uh, she's getting better and better. And uh, she's, you know, she's starting, uh, started for the last two years and getting better and better. So that's a good thing for us to see. That's a positive to, to move forward on. Your offensive production as a team, very limited at Stetson. She comes up with a near double-double, just a rebound short of it. Walk us through that game just a bit. Yeah, just, uh, you know, felt like the first half we, we had a, we played with them for the most part for early on and then we hit a drought and they took the lead, uh, you know, double-digit lead at halftime. So we made some adjustments at halftime when we came out and we shot 21% in the second half. They shot 25%, but we just couldn't get into that gap. I felt like our defense stepped up in the second half, but we, then again on the offensive end, we continued our struggles. And again, she was one bright spot, but we just struggled offensively to put the ball in the basket. Uh, we, I, I, again, our, you know, good signs for our defense that we held them, a team like that, to 25%, but we just couldn't put the ball in the basket and, and uh, couldn't cut into that lead. The best news when you have struggled a bit on the road is you get to come home and you get the Jacksonville based teams here. The Dolphins first on Thursday night and then North Florida on Saturday. A couple of big games coming up as you try to refine a little traction in the conference. Yeah, I think I think this weekend is, is you, know, you know, crucial to us for, 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 for the rest of the year to set the tone. Obviously, we're at home. We play well here. We've had some success here. Uh, we just got to get back on track and, and uh, get it going and put it. I'd like to see us put a complete game. We haven't played a complete game 
all year long. We, we play minutes or this, you know, a few minutes here or there. But uh, coming back home, two, two straight home games, hopefully we can put together, get a nice little streak going. When you're in the midst of a situation like you are right now and you know you're coming home and there's a chance to really turn things against teams like Jacksonville and North Florida, what are the steps you take as a coach to try to get the team ready for that? We just got to, you know, come in, you know, start, you know, just work. We got three days to prepare, so we just got to work hard each day and, and, and get that mindset. And it's got to start today, you know. Each day we got to come in with that mindset that, you know, that we're at home, we're in our comfort zone, we just got to work hard and, 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 the, and the result will take care of itself. We just work hard. We mentioned Raven Jefferson. Is there anybody else that you've noticed, maybe in practice or in the last couple of games, that you see as a player for you that maybe is on the verge of something special? Yeah, I think Clincy's stepping it up a little bit for us. Uh, she's struggling scoring, but she does she does the little things for us that you don't always see in the stat sheet. Maybe the scoring, but uh, she handles the ball, handles the pressure. It's in her hands the majority of the time, and she's doing a good job of, of you know handling the basketball and taking care of the basketball for us. And what's the health of your team like coming into these two important home games? We still got uh, Kristen Dickerson is out, and still uh, Lauren uh, Bogle is out. Uh, we're still it's day to day with them. We're hoping. Uh, Possibly this weekend, but uh, not sure it's day to day. We're just, we're, we got our fingers crossed and hoping they'll be back with us very soon. Well, Coach, we look forward to seeing you back here at home and we wish you all the best this week. Thank you. That's a look at what's going on with the women's basketball program. You'll want to come out, pack the Hodge against Jacksonville on Thursday night and again against North Florida on Saturday. A couple of big games for Upstate to climb the ladder in the conference standings. We'll be back with more center court right after the break. Welcome back to Center Court. It's time to go inside the game with Coach Payne. And Coach, there's a particular play that involved Mike Buchanan, who we spoke of earlier, had his double-double in the game against Stetson, in which you felt like he really provided a spark for your team. Yeah, the first half was a little bit seesaw. We were uh, late in the first half. Uh, Mike made a decent move, missed the shot, fell down, got up, sprinted back. The ball ended up being loose over here in the corner by our bench, and he dove on the floor and took a timeout. It was like he, it was like he knew before he got the ball he was going to need to take a timeout because his momentum was going to carry him out of bounds if he didn't get that done. So he did it. It was boom, boom, and the guy gave him the timeout. And then our bench guys just went out there and picked him up. And you know it was an energy play. And we went on to finish the half uh, 9-0 run or something. And uh, then started the second half and continued on. So that was a kind of a catalyst, catalyst type of play for us. Took what was a very tight contest, gave some breathing room to the Spartans, and they would pull away down the stretch for that win over Stetson. Let's talk about the health of your team. It's time for our Spartanburg Regional Hospital Sports Medicine Injury Report. How's everybody doing at this juncture in the season? Yeah, everybody's doing fine. You know, Fred's continually getting treatment on his ankle. You know, Mike's continually working on strengthening his shoulder. Uh, and um, Ty's always got a bunch of bumps and bruises. That boy takes a lot of abuse out there. And uh, so we're, you know, this is the time of the season where you try to manage your uh, practice time for your guys who are playing a lot of minutes because and, and, uh, there's some recovery issues as you get through into this time of the season. So uh, as far as specific, you know, bad injuries no but it's a lot of maintenance going on we'll take a look ahead at this week's coming games but first our special feature today with a lack of winter weather this year it's given students a chance to think long and hard about who they might try to hit in a snowball fight we'll check in with alex love who works his way around campus to find out what they're thinking I'm Alex Love reporting for Center Court and we're here in the sub connection on campus and I'm here with the number one fastest runner on the cross country team and with track distance, my teammate himself, Griffin Eubanks. Griffin, how are you doing today? Man, I'm great. Just grabbing a nice sub. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. So here at Upstate, we haven't had any winter weather yet, no snow, but if, when, when it does snow, if you could hit anybody with a snowball, who would it be? I've considered you for a while just because we're good buddies on our runs, but my probably my teammate right here Logan Ray he's a freshman here and man he just gives me a hard time so probably had to get this kid I'd have to say our coach Carson Blackwater I would have to hit my friend Jessica Roberts 
And I'm here with my good friend and classmate in advanced film production, Chris. How are you doing today? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well, thank good. you. So here in South Carolina, we haven't had any winter storms yet or any snowy weather, but when it does come, if you could hit anybody with a snowball, who would it be? It would definitely be uh, my professor, Jim Cox, or Lee Nybert. I would peg him right in the face. I actually have two people I would like to hit in the face with a snowball. Number one, Chris Smith. Number two, Lee Nybert. Who would you hit in the face with a snowball? Definitely her. Mm, yeah, definitely Rebecca. <laughs> a friendly snowball fight in the snow. What's better than that for winter? I'm Alex Love reporting for Center Court. All right, and now it's time to look ahead at this week's conference games. We are in the heart of the conference season, and you're about to make your annual trip through the River City. It'll be the Jacksonville Dolphins and the North Florida Ospreys. A couple of really important games coming up for you this week as well. Yeah, Jacksonville on Thursday, they, they're improved. They, they, you know, their scores, their competitiveness, and their results have improved over the last two weeks. Um, they're, do, they're, they're getting better, so they're uh, dangerous. They hadn't played but only one home game out of the first five. So um, they're going to – getting us back at home is going to be a boost to them. So we'll, we'll have to play well. And then, of course, North Florida is leading the league undefeated at this point, and uh, we have them on Saturday. And they're, they're a very good team and um, have the kind of uh, perimeter shooting and front-line length that will be a real challenge for us. You mentioned it. They won the showdown with Lipscomb between the unbeatens this past weekend, and they'll carry some momentum back home. What does that game like that do for you, giving you a chance to move up in the standings, knowing you have a chance to play the team that's out front right now? Well, I mean, you know, just what you said, if you know, somebody's ahead of you and need to beat them to, to move up, uh, you know, you know what, all those things are, are issues, but like we, I always say, you know, we're just trying to get these guys to think about the challenge before them. You know, winning North Florida and losing at Jacksonville doesn't really advance us that much. So we got to try to just, you know, first things first, take care of Jacksonville, then hopefully, you know, pick our game up to a level that will allow us to be, be, beat a talented team at their place. So it's, you know, there's a certain momentum that you have to build a rhythm as your season goes along in the conference. Well, a home win certainly helping build some of that momentum. It begins, that road trip does, at Jacksonville on Thursday night. You can keep up with everything going on with the Upstate men's team at UpstateSpartans.com. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank Safe you, Safe travels and all the best. Thank you very much. And now we'll tally your votes for our top play on this week's center court. The play surviving from a week ago involved Fred Miller and Ty Green. But take a look at this latest effort from Michael Buchanan, which will challenge our current champ. You can tweet your thoughts to at Upstate Spartans using the hashtag CCTopPlay. Indicate where you're going to go with Big Mike or the Ty Green Fred Miller play, and we'll let you know next week which survives as our top play on center court. So that will cap our look back at the past week in Upstate basketball. We'll look forward to doing this again with you next Wednesday as you give us a portion of your time and we give you a deeper look at Upstate athletics on Upstate Basketball Insider. Until the next edition of Center Court, have a great week, everybody.